Hello and welcome to this tutorial. So this tutorial is going to be on Construct 2 again. Oops. And pretty much I'm going to show you how to make a intro for your game. So pretty much what I mean by an intro is a picture that appears and then disappears pretty much. So, you've got your layout, you want to make sure that you've got it in here. Um, you get your window size, make sure that whatever you put is inside the window size and not outside of it. If you want, you can actually make this, um, what did I make it, 1280 by 720. Oops, I didn't work. 720. Ah, there we go. Right. Is that right? I mean, it wasn't. We'll make it that. 1280 by 720. There we go. So, pretty much, you want to get your images. I'm just going to use these again. Block 1 and block 2. and you want to make some new layers so delete GUI and rename layer 1 to background new one call it logo 1 make a new and call it logo 2 and so on and so forth and then you're going to need GUI so you've got all of those, add in your background. So I've got the um the background picture. I'm just gonna import it now, so you go on to that's the wrong one. Um if you ever do that and you've selected something, just go ahead and press escape and then you can go ahead and delete it down there. Um so I'm gonna create a tile background. And I'm going to load the picture that I have. Oh, damn it. It did the thing. Yeah, well, great. Um, 1280x720, I think it was. Yes. Um, I just got that off Google, obviously. Uh, could be bothered going onto their website. So, you know. I thought it might have been nice and let me do it, but apparently not. But anyways, you know. <laughs> so make sure that's on the background layout, which it is. And we can now lock it, so we can never edit this again. Well, we can, and if we just unlock it. But if we go into logo 1, we can now drag in block. Lock logo 1 for a minute. Go into logo 2. Dragon block 2. Like that. Unlock that. So, pretty much what we've got now is things that we can just hide and unhide. So, if I hide logo 2 and unlock logo 1, on this, we're going to get rid of drag and drop, even though you're probably not going to, but I do. Um, and pretty much add in where are we fade so the fade time will be about 1.5 is a good time that I found out wait for one second and then fade out in another 1.5 I'll wait for two seconds, it's completely up to you. I find waiting for two is better. Um, so pretty much what that'll do now is we'll get the fade in, two seconds and it'll fade out. So we need to, we need to do that again for logo two. And we're going to 
do the same delete that and get in the fade 1.5 2 0.5 save it and then we want to have the second one make sure it's not active at start so after that we're going to click on logo 2 and we're going to have initial visibility invisible now that we've got that we can lock logo 2, hide it and have logo 1 at the ready in the event sheet we're going to go ahead and have this and we're going to put um, block one, fade out finished. Block two, start fade. Then we're going to have block two, fade out finished. System, go to layout. I'm going to go by name, but you can obviously select, and then we'll just put layout next. No, uh, menu. Obviously you'll select the actual menu layout, but I don't have one, and I'm not going to make one, so... Uh-oh. Um. Okay, there we go. So, pretty much, when we start, that's going to fade in, wait for two seconds, fade out. Oh, no, that was wrong we forgot to do this so we need to unhide it so fade out no 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 when block one fades out we need to set the layout the layer even visible and we want layer Zero one two to be set as visible. I got that right, that's good. And now let's play. Fades in, fades out, fades in, fades out. So that's pretty much that. Okay. -do. So that's that working. Um, one thing we are going to add is. Oh. They've added in a file chooser in the latest version. Didn't even know that. That's interesting. I should get to know the forms. I don't think I've ever made a form before. Meh. Um, okay, so. What was we going to do? Gonna add something text. There we go. The layer logo one is locked, so we're gonna change it to GUI. There we go. Top left. I'm gonna set the text to there we go. Twenty two. We're gonna put it to skip. So pretty much, I'm going to teach you something now that's quite professional. And what you want on the intro is you want a global variable called on mobile. Now this is only if if you're going to make a mobile game. If not, and you're going standalone, then just use standalone. Uh, just just do the second option. You need to ignore this bit. In other words, so um, pretty much. If you're doing a mobile game, you want to detect if they're on the mobile or if they're on a computer. Otherwise, certain events will play twice. So, let's have a look then. We can go on to mobile system and then we need to check. Is it on mobile device? If they are, 
system set value of on mobile to 1. So we've got that set. Now I'm going to quickly add another comment and call it text. I'm going to go ahead and go on to. Oh dear. That's text 2. I don't know where text 1 came from, but okay. Uh, text 2, we're just going to call it skip or ski, you know, as you do. Uh, we're gonna. Oh, hold on, no, 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 no. Uh, we want to check if they're on a mobile device. So compare compare variable. If on mobile is set to zero, then we want to do that. If it's not set to zero, oops. Oh my god. By the time I did that, I could have just made it again. Um, if if the if it's set to one, then that means we're on a mobile device, pretty much. So we're gonna set the text. So ski set text. I'm gonna call it press um, space to skip. And then we're gonna have this as tap to skip. Oh my god, skip. We go. Pretty long tutorial, but we're doing quite quite easy but like professional things here. So it takes a bit of time. Um tab to skip and pretty much now we just need to code that in. So we're gonna go ahead and put um cl clever dot 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 or eclipse, whatever you call it. And I just got a notification. Don't worry about that. So, pretty much, we want to detect if they are tapping. To do that, we're going to need to add a touch function, which is now added. And we can go on to touch. And on any touch, or is in touch, or any touch start, on any touch, where are we? On tap, yeah, I think that's on tap, and we are going to make a condition of on mobile being equal to one. And we're going to go ahead and go to layer by name, menu. And we're going to do the same, except instead of a touch. It's going to be keyboard um, on Kiko pressed. Key is down. And on mobile is equal to zero. Play. Press space to skip, and it'll skip, but obviously I don't have the layout name. So if we debug it, if we go on to debug, 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 like, there we go, debug, and we press space, not what I was looking for. Apparently there is no console, but okay. I like that you can you can pause. Yeah. Um so pretty much it'll check. I can't show you if the touch one works, but it does work because I've done it before. So you just gonna have to trust me on that one, but as you can see the keyboard one works. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. It's been a pretty long one, but you've learned quite a bit. And um, just this few lines of code can actually make a pretty professional layout. Obviously, if you've got a good background, good images, and all that, then it's pretty good. So, on that note, I will bid you farewell.